Greetings beloved and welcome to this video to this brand new topic called let scripture speak about our system and what do I mean by that you will find out <laughs> I'm going to cliffhanger you a little bit uh, but of course within the first it is going to be a mini series uh, maybe five six maybe um, episodes anyway uh, you will in the first episode you will already see what I mean and then I hope you will go along just to to um, to experience what I propose to you just to experience my proposal and then at the end we are going to go to a conclusion but first let's start of course with the standard slides but let's go here so I'm going to propose something and of course talk about the how and why uh, we are speaking about and especially I think in most slides will be of course uh, dedicated to scripture passages about our system what do I mean you will find out first the standard slides of course all of God's Word is for everyone we know that all of God's Word is the truth we know that as well so this passage is a, uh, a foundational one regarding that however we know that also that not all of God's scripture is addressed to everyone no it's a part it's about it's about the target group and it's about times and it's about perspective so we need to learn to correctly cut the word the word of truth that's the whole the, the whole point if you are not correctly cutting it you are not in the truth anymore three dimensions uh, I have discovered until now so maybe there are more please let me know if you find more but I found target groups eras and perspectives so you know already about these things uh, if you want to share them with others that's why I also mention it because these slides are foundational still the target groups are the Israelites and the Gentiles that's it two target groups only the eras are more than two however we need to learn to distinguish for which period something was intended also the perspective on from which something has been uh, uttered is very important and relevant and it's only absolute or relative okay so the facts and assumptions about uh, regarding God's Word uh, are also very important please go through them uh, we know things already that for instance there are never contradictions in God's Word however there are apparent contradictions or paradoxes yes but those are not contradictions you have to learn to uh, distinguish in the right way that's the whole point that's the whole story so um, also I want to include the fact that God's Word um, also can be seen as a jigsaw puzzle in this regard also with regard to this topic I mentioned this because it's so important to learn and notice connections very important so the point is that we learn to if we see a passage or something and some information a piece of information you park it in the back of your head because you don't probably know how to place it etc so until you find more puzzle pieces then you can start to compose a bigger picture where applicable of course so it's so important to be patient here so just collect your puzzle pieces and when the time is right and God is determining everything as we know then you will see the bigger picture definitely okay now we are going to the topic at hand and first we start with the elements in this study so first we're going to ask ourselves how so and why this topic 
and also we will see what are alternative systems i know you don't know yet what we're talking about doesn't doesn't matter you will see it you will see it very soon what are alternative systems and why did we learn at school about a particular system in school sorry um, and then i'm going to propose a, a system with explanation of course with all the with all the the components of that system uh, of course i'm going to show some uh, illustrations of course and of course we're going to spend most time most of the time in this study uh, uh, on passages of scripture for support of this proposal and your consideration of course and of course this is my current view right of course so the result we will end with the result of the proposed system what will it result in so first the how so and why this topic so this is about the system we live in now it starts to picture in your head we are to be aware of god's design around us so it is very this topic is very relevant in our daily lives it is important in our daily lives to realize that we live in a system that corresponds to the character of its designer and creator oh yes of course so my question then to you my first initial question is which, which is better for your peace of mind is it an open system exposed to all kinds of dangers or is it a closed system which is favorably and safely ordered and structured that is the question so what is better for your peace of mind of course I know that you're going to choose a closed system because it talks about favorably and safely but let's see what we're talking about and also again why have we learned at school or in school about an open system what is behind it and that's really important to understand to understand the background of it so let's look at alternative systems first now you understand what i mean so there are two alternative systems i even know of so i'm going to talk uh, about them an open system and the inverse of an open system an open system is a globe or a sphere maybe i should no uh I should mention sphere right okay anyway a sphere that first of all revolves on its own axis with a speed of about 1670 kilometers per hour or I think approximately thousand miles per hour also it revolves in its entirety the system around the Sun with a speed of about 108,000 kilometers kilometers per hour wow but that's not all no even that system around the sun that whole sun system so the sun and the solar system are also revolving around a central milky way sun with a speed of about <laughs> of about 830,503 km kilometers per hour i mean that is mind boggling that is dazzling i don't know what for what kind of english word i should use but this is really something right so this is a system and this is the system also that we learned about in school right 
Okay, now there's another system that is also gaining some traction. That is the inverse of an open system, and that is called hollow earth. That means, keep hold on to your chairs, that means that people live on the inside of the sphere. So heaven and the sky is in the middle of the sphere, and we live around it on the sphere or on the inside of the sphere the inside walls so to speak so we so so everybody living on the inside is looking if, if they look upwards they see the the middle of the sphere obviously there is god in the middle of his creation that is the thinking behind it so there is heaven and the stars and the constellations and everything the the universe so to speak is in the middle of the sphere but it's not so simple because uh, if you look at these dazzling these dazzling speeds here it is uh, also feasible in this system because mathematically there is no difference from the globe or the sphere system the open system why not because there is a mathematically it it works such that when you go from the from where humans live on the inside of the sphere to the uh, towards the middle of the sphere then everything gets smaller so the shape of a rocket for instance if it's if it's uh if it's launched to the air onto the air it gets smaller and smaller in reality it gets smaller also so you don't if you sit in the rocket you will not notice that you get smaller but in reality you get smaller that is the thinking behind it not only that but the speed of the rocket slows down toward the middle everything slows down i don't know if you have heard about this theory I think that I've heard that scientists cannot disprove this system compared to the open system. They cannot disprove this one compared to the open system, that is. So, um, so with this inverse system, I mean, I'm not going to go through them, of course. I'm, I'm going through my pro proposal but when we are going through the the scriptural passages sometimes I will mention I will just uh, mention the open system and the inverse I will mention that just as a comparison so for you to consider if it is possible to read that passage of scripture in light of these two systems and then you make up your mind but I will tell you already uh, when we get to those passages I will tell you my view on it but you think for yourself then okay so then the question becomes why did we learn at school or in school about the open system the sphere system so what let's ask ourselves this what would be the motivation of those who defied our school education about this before we go further please be aware of the fact that our school education is not invented by governments uh, -uh no it is invented or determined rather by a small group of people who are for a long time already who are behind the scenes the ones who are uh, who are the puppeteers so to speak so they are um, uh, what is the English expression they are uh, uh, determining what people hear what they eat what they consume 
what they see and uh, 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 information on television, etc. These people determine that. And these people on their own are also, uh, they are also led by spiritual beings and the top, the, the people in the top of the hierarchy, they know about that, that they are led by these spirit beings. So just for you to have an idea what is behind this. So they determined what humans are learning uh, in school with a certain motivation. So what would be the motivation? So if you just look at this system, this open system we are now mentioning, let's ask ourselves this. If the globe or the sphere revolves around the sun and also if it is a an awesomely small dot in the vast universe uh, the fastness of the universe then this place where we are living in is also quite insignificant insignificant compared to the vastness of the universe right so if we think about our system as totally insignificant what is the effect of that on our self-image something to consider right secondly in this system people are exposed to all kinds of dangers such as stray meteorites stray asteroids solar flares that reach beyond the earth so they can hit the earth at any time and the result of that will be no earth anymore it will be toast the earth will be toast humanity is non-ex non-existent in one hit so i heard i think approximately 10 years ago in 2012 i think um, that there was a solar flare that just missed the earth that was the that was the article that was the the news back then in the newspapers it just missed the earth and you know in in in, in terms of universe um, a distance of 45,000 kilometers is very small so this solar flare missed the earth because it went farther than the earth but it missed the earth uh, on approximately an, a distance of 45,000 uh, 45,000 kilometers so think about that what does it do with our mindset if we read about these things right okay let's continue no we will not continue we will keep it here because why goodness the time time is flying when you have fun I will stop now because otherwise it will be too long and then uh, try to part all the, uh, the episodes. So I thank you for watching and we will go to the next slide uh, and of course the next slides in the next episode. Thank you and see you then.